Channel pump and equipment. SCP series progressive cavity pumps. Instructions for pump assembly. This is an instructional assembly video for the SCP series progressing cavity pump. Before starting the assembly of your pump, we recommend that you contact a Shanley pump representative if you have any questions. Tools required for assembly. A wrench set. A soft mallet. Snap ring pliers. A punch and hammer. A spanner wrench. A banding tool. a vise mounted to a table or stand, and an arbor press or hydraulic press. Drive shaft and bearing frame assembly. Secure the drive shaft in a vise. Be sure the o-ring is free from defect and slide it over the drive shaft down to the groove at the bottom of the drive shaft next to the head. Next, locate the shaft wear sleeve and determine the beveled edge on the inner diameter. Slide the shaft wear sleeve to the bottom of the drive shaft. The shaft wear sleeve should fit over the O-ring. Slide the stuffing box housing onto the shaft wear sleeve. Alternate the cuts in the packing rings as you install them into the stuffing box housing. Next, install the packing gland, T-head bolts and lock nuts and tighten with a wrench. If the pump has a mechanical seal, this is the time to install the mechanical seal housing and seal onto the shaft wear sleeve. Next, slide the shaft sleeve onto the drive shaft. Install the flinger ring onto the shaft cup side up, away from the packing. Slide the snap ring onto the shaft. Prepare the bearing cover by installing the lip seal in the bearing cover and the O-ring on the outside of the bearing cover. The lip seal should be flush with the outside of the cover. Slide the bearing cover on the drive shaft with the back of the shaft seal facing up. Next, install one spacer onto the shaft. Although not shown here, be sure to pack the axial bearing completely with bearing grease, then slide it onto the shaft. Place the shaft and bearings in a press. There is a close tolerance between the drive shaft and the bearing. Using an adapter if needed, press on the greased bearing until it clears the first friction point. Next, install the grease retaining shield, then the bearing spacer sleeve. Finish pressing the axial bearing until it stops against the ring on the shoulder. Add a grease retaining shield onto the spacer sleeve. Make sure to grease the radial bearing and install this bearing in the same manner as the axial bearing, using an adapter if needed. Secure the drive shaft in a vise. You may want to use a screwdriver through the holes in the drive shaft head to keep the shaft from turning. Place another grease retaining shield over the radial bearing as shown. Install two spacer rings.
Place the tab washer on the shaft. Be sure that the tab washer sits flat and is in position on the slot on the drive shaft. Thread the bearing nut on the shaft with the beveled edge down and tighten. Continue to tighten the bearing nut until the shaft wear sleeve can't be turned independent of the shaft. After the shaft wear sleeve is secure with the bearing nut, align the closest bearing nut slot with one of the tabs on the tab washer. Bend the tab into the slot to secure the bearing nut with a flat punch. The tab should be bent completely into the slot to lock the bearing nut. If the lock nut has been tightened properly, the shaft spacer sleeve should not turn freely. Place the bearing housing over the completed drive shaft assembly. Be sure that this is positioned square. With a soft mallet, preferably plastic covered or rubber, tap the bearing housing down on the shaft and the outer bearing races. Press the bearing assembly into the bearing housing. Slow down towards the end. You will feel and hear the bearing bracket bottom out at the end. Generally, the bearing nut will be flush with the end of the bearing housing. Secure the bearing housing in a vise vertically. If not, tap the bearing cover evenly into the housing until you can see the groove. Check to see that you can see the outer snap ring groove. Use snap ring pliers to install the snap ring into the groove. Apply grease or anti-seize lubricant to the snap ring after it is installed to make it easier for future pump disassembly. Pull the flinger ring evenly into position. Coupling rod assembly and installation. Secure the coupling rod in the vise as shown. Present the bushings and partially install them with a rubber mallet. Place the coupling rod in the press. Use a socket to cradle the coupling rod head for even pressure distribution. Be sure everything is aligned square. Slowly press the coupling rod bushing into the coupling rod. This should not take much pressure from the press. Press it in until it is even. Secure the coupling rod in a vise. Make sure that the cover sleeve is placed in the coupling rod with the smaller diameter in the correct position inward. Apply a lubricant to aid in installing the sleeve. Prepare the coupling rod first by installing one of the cover sleeves to the center of the coupling rod. Once the cover sleeve is on the connecting rod, add the retaining band. The rounded edge of the retaining sleeve should be towards the cover sleeves on the coupling rod. Make sure the completed bearing frame assembly is secured to a workbench. Tap the guide bushings into the head of the drive shaft. Although not shown here, make sure to liberally fill the pivot joint cavity of the drive shaft with joint grease. Slide the coupling rod into the drive shaft head. After adding more grease to the joint, tap the guide bushings further into the drive shaft head until they are flush with the drive shaft head. Next, install the drive shaft pin. Be sure the coupling rod is square to the drive shaft head, then slide the retaining sleeve into position. Using a punch and a hammer, put a peen mark on the edge of the retaining sleeve to keep it in place while the pump is in use. Pull the retaining sleeve into position. Install the cover sleeve, making sure that the ribs inside the sleeve fit into the grooves on the shaft and connecting rod. Make sure that the cover sleeve is placed on the coupling rod with the smaller diameter in the correct position inward. Slide the second cover sleeve onto the connecting rod. Add the retaining sleeve. The rounded edge of the retaining sleeve should be towards the cover sleeve. Rotor installation. Install two guide bushings on the rotor head in the same manner as before.
Liberally fill the rotor head with joint grease as with the drive shaft head. Slide the rotor head over the coupling rod head. You may want to use the support to keep the rotor head square with the connecting rod. Tap the bushings with a hammer to make sure the retaining sleeve can slide over them. If needed, rotate the shaft to align the holes of the coupling rod and rotor. With the bushings in pinhole aligned, install the second coupling rod pin. Make sure to add additional grease to the pivot joint. Install the retaining sleeve. Once again, punch the retaining sleeve at a 45 degree angle with a center punch in between the rotor head and retaining sleeve. Pull the second cover sleeve into place. Fill both cover sleeves with lubricant. Place the four clamp bands over the rotor and into position on the cover sleeves. The straight part of the clamp band should be to the left when facing the pump shaft. Slide the straight piece of the clamp band into the bandit tool. Squeeze the black lever from the bottom side of the tool to secure the straight part of the band. Rotate the handle, tightening the band. Continue tightening the clamp band until it slightly depresses the cover sleeve. When you have tightened the clamp band as desired, pull up on the blue handle, cutting the excess band. Bend the excess band over the buckle as shown and tap down flush with a hammer. Repeat the clamp band process for a second, third, and fourth clamp band. Suction Casing Installation Install the suction case gasket between the suction case and the bearing housing assembly. Present the suction casing with the help of a support if needed. The flat machine end goes towards the bearing housing. Install all four bolts, nuts, and lock washers. Tighten each of these evenly using a wrench. Stator installation. Install the key into the keyway. Secure the drive shaft with a pipe wrench and rag to keep the rotor from turning as you install the stator. Be sure not to damage the drive shaft or key. Lubricate the rotor with hand soap. Facing the rotor, turn the stator clockwise on the rotor, pushing at the same time. Continue turning and pushing the stator until the pilot of the stator end is completely in the recess of the suction case. Install the shorter threaded end of all four tie rods into the threaded holes of the suction casing. Present the suction casing while sliding the ends of each tie rod through the holes on the casing. You may need to tap the discharge case further into position using a rubber mallet. Thread one nut and washer onto each tie rod.
tighten each of the nuts onto the tie rods in a star pattern. The tie rod should be tightened until the outer casing of the stator is firmly and evenly touching the discharge case and the suction case. Your pump is now completely assembled and should be leak tested using water to check the seal for leakage. If no leaks are present, the pump can now be reinstalled into the pump system. If you have any questions about or require spare parts for the repair of your Shanley SCP Progressive Cavity Pump, please feel free to contact us at www.shanleypump.com. We always have complete pumps and all spare parts in our inventory ready to ship the same day. 